Welcome back to the Animite Tales podcast, Weapons Workshop episode. Uh, these episodes are pretty much what they sound like, similar to when DMs and players for all sorts of tabletop RPGs want to do character workshops to build characters for their uh, up-and-coming games. These workshops do all sorts of things using the Animite Tales system to see if we can make characters from fiction as well as items from fiction. Uh, this episode is about weapons, and what kind of weapons? Weapons from fiction. So, without any further ado, we just recently did a dice roll to see who got the highest and who will be telling theirs first. Kane, you went first. Would you like to tell us what yours is? I mean, no, not really, but I agree with this, so... Um... <laughs> well... I am doing a, well, I wouldn't say the weapon itself might not be iconic, as there are technically, I believe, 17 or so in the world in this universe, but I am doing a, a shard blade from the Stormlake Archives series. Um, Oathbringer, to be exact, um, from the ones that our uh, main character has for a time. Um, so, I guess I should get into the general abilities that it has in law okay that i'm aware of and then um you know i will i will describe how badly i have done recreating it Go ahead. um <laughs> so in in this world these these blades have not ever been able to be recreated again um they they essentially have the ability to um cut through any, seemingly any, almost any physical matter, except with basically a rare few exceptions. Um, one being shard plate, which normally goes with the shard blades, um, which is almost like this power armor, knight armor-esque sort of thing. Um, that is one of, the, basically, the only known thing to protect a shard uh, bearer, or protect someone from a shard blade. Um, these things, upon a contact with someone, have the ability to essentially cut their soul. So they never cut the flesh, but they cut the person's soul. So if you slice someone in the arm, for instance, that arm will go numb forever, and it will be unusable, because they've severed the soul um, to that arm. Now, if they hit you in, say, the spine, or the, the chest, or the head, you're just, you're just dead. There's no saving you, you're dead, and your eyes burn out of your body. Um, they also have the ability to summon, once someone has bonded to these blades, which takes five days, I believe, to bond to a weapon, or bond to one of these weapons, they have the ability to uh, call it out, uh, or summon it to them. Um, and it takes ten heartbeats, which is very specific, um, to summon their weapon. However, if it leaves their side, most shard bearers, the weapon will just vanish and they'll have to recall it. Uh, some who practice gain the ability to essentially be able to keep the weapon out despite it leaving their hands. Um, and another factor to these blades is they're far lighter than a regular weapon. Like, unnaturally so. So... Even something like a great sword is far lighter than it should be. So these weapons are very hard to sort of get used to wielding at first, if you've never practiced with one. Um, now, bad, bad on to the uh, bad recreation, shall we? Okay. Um. <laughs> so the the requirements I've made for this weapon is you have to have 8 willpower, 12 dexterity, and 8 strength. Now, the 8 strength comes from the fact that, despite it being a great sword, it is incredibly light. So, it is, uh, it is not needed for uh, massive strength. Uh, the materials I have made out of is uh, mineral, which is probably not most accurate, but I will uh, get onto that later. Spatial... Uh, in this case, I've just gone with Living Distortion and Telepathy, which is probably the most important part with Telepathy Projection. Um, now, the ability of this weapon is, it can basically 
cut through any uh, matter or cut through anything inorganic, so, you know, steel, anything. The one weakness I have given it, however, um, to equate that to the other shard blade material is it cannot cut through mineral, i.e. what it's made out of. Okay. Um, and obviously, once it hits it, it is incapable of cutting something essentially with a soul or, a, you know, something of a mind. So when it cuts it, it instead cuts its, I guess, its will itself, its soul, we'll call it in this case, um, which have a multitude of effects, which I will get into in a second. However, um, once someone has bonded to this weapon, they are capable of summoning it, which requires a 10 willpower for you to summon this weapon. However, it takes a, ro it takes a turn to summon this weapon. And if it leaves your hand, you have to roll uh, a willpower roll, which I believe I've also made it 10, to keep it up. Otherwise, the blade vanishes and you have to resummon it. Now, let's get to the, uh, to, the, to the very painful part of this weapon. The meat and potatoes, if you will. So this weapon causes an ailment which you have to get a 25 or above, not to die to. Oh, shoot. Um, this is willpower as well. <laughs> mm. So, if you get a natural one, and you are hit in the head or torso, you are permanently removed from your body, and you will never be able to go back to it. Okay. You are severed. You are, you are dead. To put it simply, you're, you are dead from your body. If you get two or a five, you ain't coming back without resurrection. Okay. If... You get essentially a six to a nine. You know, you, you get under a, you get under a ten, but you don't get a five. Uh, you're you're removed from your body for one d six of days. Okay. If it's ten to a fourteen, one d four of days. If it's fifteen to nineteen, it's one d four of hours. If it's twenty to twenty four, it's one d four of minutes. And if it's twenty five, they good fam. Now. <laughs> If we go to their arms and legs, they get a natural one. That limb is just it's gone forever. <laughs> it will never work for you. Um, resurrection or some mass healing ability might work. I don't know, because technically it's your will and essence being cut out of it. So technically, even if you remade the arm, uh, you would never really connect back to it. So uh, that limb might as well be dead. Uh, if you get a 2 or a 5, you can't use that limb for 1d6 of days. 6 to 9, 1d4 of days. Ex you know, blah, blah, blah. 10 to 14, 1d4 of hours. 15 to 19, 1d6 of minutes. And 20 to 24, 1d4 of minutes. Now, here's the caveat. For any of these abilities to work, you have to bond to the weapon first. Otherwise, this is basically just a blunt stick. Okay. Um, bonding to it takes five days. If that weapon leaves your side within five before you have bonded to it, you have to start the process over again. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to keep this weapon to you, on you for five days and not have it leave your side. Once it's bonded to you, though, it is, is bonded to you. And yeah, if you, and if the weapon leaves your hand... So if someone disarms you, per se, you have to make that 10 roll on willpower, otherwise vanishes, and you'll take a turn to summon it back. Okay. That's about it. Now, how accurate is this? Well, not very. <laughs> I mean, it does sound relatively accurate, but I see what you mean. Like, it's actually supposed to be something that is... First of all, the abilities would work without you being bonded to it or not. The only thing that bonding gives it is that the weapon is basically definitively yours. You can summon it, no one oh, else can. So technically, if it wasn't bonded to someone, someone could still pick it up and use it. Yeah, and in use the it. They just wouldn't be able to summon it and desummon it. Okay, so that's that's the thing in the book series, but in this, you're saying it can't yeah, be used Yeah, in this, it, you it can't be used until you're bonded to it. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. I, 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 I kind of like that, to be fair. The other thing is, obviously, it just it just basically has the natural one effect. 
in its in its thing. Yeah, because it's a more of a literary device uh, rather yeah. than like a a really powerful artifact. It's like yeah, this is the thing that they use. There are powerful. only a few of these in the world. If you have so the main thing in the books is you know when someone has a shard blade because they're so uniquely designed and alien. Mm. You basically know unless you've got someone on your side with one, you've lost. You're just dead. Because okay. you, they're basically the most powerful weaponry in the show. Um, same as sort of like shard, shard armor. Uh, if, you, if you have that, the, that person is going to be a very tough person to beat. Not invincible, but uh, it's far more defense than anything else will give them. Similar to the mineral, which is why I see you did it where it was mineral. Yes, yeah, so I did it with mineral and having it that technically if you fight someone on a chunk of mineral, you could arguably possibly break it, find weak spots in it, and jab them, but you're not just going to get the definitive win. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd argue maybe to make it out of titanium, considering it's technically metal, but considering these things are practically unbreakable, I was thinking it would just be better to go with mineral. No, that's that's entirely fair, to be honest. Um, what about you, Sam? What about your opinions on this so far? I th- to to be honest, it's just cutting out a bit for me. And I think, but I think I got the gist of it. I, th- I can re- I can repeat any bits if you want. Uh, I think it sounds definitely sounds like a weapon I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want in the game. <laughs> This is this is the funny thing because you you already gave me sort of a little taste of this before we actually did this episode. I think you were talking to me about this like uh, either yesterday or, or like uh, last week, and I remember saying just do that. Yeah, it's fine because you know whatever. But you did actually say to me, "It's like yeah, I know that I'm not probably winning the vote on this one." I didn't come here to win, boys. I just came. I did my job. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. And you did it well because, in all honesty, I'm not going to lie. I kind of do want this in the game, and here's. I- Here's the reason why, because as 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 you've already said, if you haven't attuned to it, it's basically a useless stick. But even more so, uh, I, Sam, I don't know if you've been reading this. Uh, it literally says damage NA, which means that if the effect doesn't work, like if someone doesn't get a 25 or doesn't get a natural 20 on willpower or something, that basically means that, yeah, all of these effects happen. But if you do... The weapon does nothing, and that was a waste of your turn. And I, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like that. That like this weapon, this weapon is basically kryptonite to those who uh, don't have either mimicry or high willpower. Mm. Yes, arguably, there's an argument that it could technically affect mimicry because it's still passing through them. It's but still that soul, point, so it could be yeah, it's still their soul, they're slicing. Yeah. It could be that factor of like if you know when they return, it's like okay, they were hit, and it, it's not a lethal blow, but it's now like okay, they're losing chunks. They of might themselves. still they might still be shot out of their body depending on their role. Yes. So yeah. for most for most people who have like a willpower of like let's say plus one, if not <laughs> lower than that. This thing, you're always having to roll against the ailment every time you get hit. Yeah, it's just whether or not you're going to get it. Because 20 to 24 basically means that unless if you get a natural 20, you are not going to... You're not going to not have an ailment. And then, yeah. as you said, like if you have, like what is it, like plus one or less... Or at the very least, if you don't have plus, yeah, if you basically have less than plus one, you literally need natural twenties to save you. Otherwise, there is a there is a twenty, in, there is a nineteen in twenty chance that you're getting something that is either going to do something to your character that is irreparable, uh, difficult to manage, or basically permanent. And I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like this aspect for the sake of balance. Yes, it's not balanced, but at the same time, it's like this. You... Go on, Sam. Do you know the only way I would ever put this in? Mostly because you know, you, you say like the body, but I think the body specifically, you're forced out of the body for like. Let's say you've got what? Let's say you've got relatively good willpower. If you get fifteen to nineteen, you're out of your body for four hours, like one d four hours, which means you could just be killed instantly. Or yeah. killed over a battle, and like if you're in a battle, so the yeah. only way I would ever put this is a, like as a boss weapon. Yeah, 
like mostly like mo- mostly per- probably for one of those bosses that was intended to kill you mm. early on and like you like i don't know like you wake up in hell and that's the adventure <laughs> or, oh, like yes. you're, or like it's that, one of those like, I dimensional that, yeah. travel ones where like oh we're in now uh, um, what? what do you call the place that dead people go to in your real in oh, the Omegaverse? Like, yeah, like like if you wanted to do an Omegaverse one, that's the only way I would put it in because no matter where you hit, there's very unlikely you're gonna get twenty five. You're pretty yeah. screwed. I mean, again, in if every you, aspect these these I kind of wanted to have that fear in them. The like again, these are basically the most powerful weaponry in their sort of yeah. verse, and I sort of want to convey that in the fact of yeah. No, unless unless you are truly one of the most powerful in a specific art, you are kind of screwed if you run into someone with this weapon and they've actually bonded to it. Personally, I like it because that it's terrifying. I like that you have, as you said, infused the fear from the actual story itself into this mechanically. I- I've got to know, would uh, you know what the spell denial would denial just make this weapon useless against someone, or would it still have an effect? Ooh, uh, I. I'd have to I I have to be honest I, only because that it is a direct effect ability and also because denial is specifically built for these one of a kind specific abilities I'd have to say yes but if you haven't got it active at the time of when you get hit by it you can't retroactively roll it because it's too late the ability has already asked you to roll its willpower requirement but Otherwise, if you have the, uh, denial active upon getting struck with it, yeah, it just neutralizes it because that's the special ability. Also, of- this weapon takes a turn to summon, by the way. So if you catch this person essentially with their pants down, they've they got, have a, lost they have to wait an entire and say they get jumped by four people. They now have to deal with four people at least for a rotation. Yes, and mm-hmm. not have their weapon. Yeah, but nope. that, is a, that is a thing. You could just keep the weapon on you at all times, can't you? You can, yeah. But again, if it if you get disarmed, you have to roll to keep it from not de-summoning. Yeah, um, sure so yeah. there is there is ways where if someone knocks out of your hand... Sure, yeah, if you have decent willpower, very low chance, but you still have to get that weapon back into your hand. And if you want to go, oh, I just re-summon it, well, you better be willing to wait that turn. Well, so I think I think we've come to I think we've come to sort of like the bit where I guess we should ask the three questions for this then. So plausibility and mechanics do its do its mechanics work and is it plausible in the system? Yes. Although we'll get to the third question in a second, but is it law friendly? Relatively, as you said, it wasn't as accurate. You said that you know it's although that it's made from a specific material, you know that is broken or you know is unbreakable and stuff like that, which is you know law friendly to this. You also said that like um, the way in which that people can pick them up is different, and it is just up everyone is getting. It's as if everyone is getting natural ones, like. It's always you hit. There is no roll against it. You lose arm. You lose limb. You die. I that's I, it. I won't say, but it's like there's only there's only one way. Well, there seems there are ways to technically counteract the effect, but you have to essentially be very specific people to be able to do that. Fair, fair. So again, like so, yeah. so I would say, is it law friendly? Relatively, as relative as you could do it within a. Frame. As much as I can make an insta kill weapon, basically. yes. As much as you can make an insta kill weapon without basically completely ruining the balance, because I I do have to agree with Sam. I would love to run this in a game, but I don't think I could ever give it to any more than one person. And it this, would have to this be a almost boss. feels like the quest weapon everyone is after. Is yes, yeah. This is the thing you're stopping the big bad from getting. I will yes. actually say though. On top of that, I do have to disagree on the whole, oh, the rest of the party or the rest of the campaign is in the afterlife. I actually have to disagree. I think that it's the perfect thing of, like, you have to stop him from getting it, and then when you disarm him, it's that thing of, like, you have to stop him from being able to, like, stay stay with him, whatever. But even if, he, even if say, for instance, the boss ends up getting it, you know, they could end up being this thing of like, okay, they're a big threat. We have to figure a way in in stopping it. And- well, so I guess I guess I should have written this out. But in in show, the way because uh, a lot of nobles have these sort of weaponry. So what they do is they duel, and then after the duel, the person willingly disbonds to that weapon because they'll sort of duel to shard blades. So technically. There is a way where if you can technically break their will into uh, giving up the weapon, they can disbond to it. Ooh. Actually, can I ask you something? 
because I'm not if, they, if you make someone hit themselves with that. Yes, they're not immune to the effect. So technically, just, they would also have to roll the willpower. So I mean, that'd be a great way for like a super strength either is to just like grab their arms and make them like. Yeah, no. If you if you just half. if you just de-direct the weapon back at them and they don't get a 25 think, or above willpower. They could technically beat the boss. I think you've also done a perfect thing as well. Because this is a spatial-based and telepathy-based weapon, it pretty much means that it is immune to one of the most broken abilities that we recently saw, which was Spatial Mirror. It It's immune to Spatial Mirror because it just cuts through space. And even if it was, it's like, oh yeah, it's a telepathic and spatial concept. So the blade itself is a, you know, is a thing where it's like, okay, the slash hits them, but the weapon doesn't do any damage, which means the effect can't touch them. Because it, the effect actually comes directly from the weapon itself. And then, yeah, so I kind of like that, that like, oh, the weapon ha hits itself, the weapon does nothing to itself, move on. I guess the most that it could potentially do is make the weapon potentially break itself, I guess? Uh, but again, since... Quite possibly, yeah. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where it's practically immune to that that issue. Which... What, if it, what, if it, what if it hits someone that doesn't have a soul? But well, then it, just, well, it, does then it just doesn't nothing. Yeah. No. Or, or, it or it. technically, if it doesn't have a soul, it might count as just a regular object and thus cut it. So even if it is organic, well, like say if you cut like a, a you know like grass yeah. or a robot, or something. yeah, or something like that. Like yeah, technically it's organic, but it's still a still an object. That's why when I wrote it down in organic, I said like people, animals, etc. So, I was the thinking idea about like. If like if you had, like you know, get you know, like the puppet one, you can make organic puppets. I mean, yeah, but they they say, for instance, with the puppet one, it would. Just I know, I know what you mean. Down anyway. I mean, yeah. also they're they're made from psychic energy, so I guess you could arguably state that. They yeah, just they could, there's an the... argument. Yeah, the connection to the mm. user. Yeah. Mm. So the last thing that well, I guess we'll ask then is amount of homebrew slash DM allowance. Uh, how much do you think? On a scale of one to five, or even one, no, 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 we'll get as we'll get as simple as this. One to five, how much DM allowance do you think you'd have to have? Uh, like, as in, how much leeway do you think that you'd have to have? One to five. <laughs> <laughs> Is, is five maximum or is one maximum? So one is basically DM doesn't really have to allow too much. Five. It, five. Yeah, five, yeah five, I have five, to agree. Five. five. Yeah. I feel like Seven. I could I could argue a potential four. This is but more something the DM makes to yes. then be yeah. like, but this is by the way. This is something that you know if, Sam, if Sam brought this to me, I would actually buy the next plane ticket over to where he lives and slap him. <laughs> this is that, <laughs> that level of, this no, is... Sam, or or even, to be fair, anyone, I think. I would... <laughs> you know this is a... This is the nullifier power of D of of DM things, where yes, it shouldn't yeah. it shouldn't go to a PC. <laughs> yeah, fair, Wait, fair. I don't trust PCs with this weapon. <laughs> okay, so I guess we'll move on uh, to my weapon, which is the weapon known as the Drop Near Spear from God of War Ragnarok. Spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't played or watched God of War Ragnarok, but this is mostly going to be talking about the weapon. I won't try and go into too many of the spoilers. Anyway, in God of War Ragnarok, uh, there is a point where of which that you get a weapon made for you called the Dropnir Spear, based on the legend uh, in the fables of uh, Norse mythology, the Dropnir Ring. Uh, two dwarves basically wanted to contest for the love of Odin and made a piece of jewellery, a golden ring that would duplicate itself eight times every night. Because of this, they were hoping that therefore they could give Odin an ability to basically make infinite gold, and he did not care for it. Therefore, later on, you are given the ring, known as Dropnir, and later on, that exact same ring is used to forge to make the Dropnir Spear. Dropnir Spear has the special ability of controlling or generating wind. The user can throw the spear and it can then explode with massive impact and explosive force. The explosion actually is stated that it is pure wind or pure shock waves exploding from the spear itself. Once the spear is destroyed, the user can create another one. The user can create up to eight and no more because the drop near would duplicate itself eight times. However, ironically enough, the 
spear is not just a spear. The user actually wears a ring in which they can then summon said spears whenever they need. That being said, let's get into how I built this weapon. <laughs> so first of all, it was a ring. Uh, and the way that it worked is that the person who created it actually designed a ring and a two-handed spear. The two-handed spear and the ring were then forged together to basically make a specific type of weapon that would then be able to grant someone the ability to clone a spear. The clone spear would be because of the exact particular type of weaponing, uh, weaponing uh, the exact type of weapon that it was, and this is how it goes. The requirements of this are actually a 14 dexterity and a 14 of strength, because it is both a dexterity and strength weapon. Uh, however, if someone has only just those stats or under, they are only able to wield it based on their higher stat and must wield it with a two uh, with two hands. If they wish to wield it with one hand, they must get a 16 on strength. Next are the materials. The materials of this particular thing are iron, uh, uh, no, also known as iron steel, which is a golden-like metal using our system, uh, that actually also um, deals extra uh, impact, sonic, or spatial damage. Uh, a cloning stone with the ability cavalry to make more clones, and finally the ability known as the shockwave stone with ranged shockwaves. The range of the weapon itself is 70, that it allows the user to make massive explosions uh, come from the tip of the spear to shoot ranged shockwaves that uh, reach up to 70 meters away from the user. The durability of the ring itself is 300, and the spears are 150. However... The damage is plus 15 piercing, plus 8 vibro bonus. And vibro bonus is basically impact, spatial, or uh, sonic. Uh, so, the abilities of the ring is the item is a ring. When worn, the wearer can summon a spear in the hand of the ring. The spear is made of iron and can be used to blast uh, can blast impact, uh, impact damage equivalent to 2d10s. I don't know why I put... 2d20s there, that's weird. Via dexterity or strength roll. So you can use strength or dexterity to fire out the sonic blasts or the impact blasts. Uh, making the spear is a bonus action that requires no roll to make. Upon a spear being made, the user can decide to detonate them, dealing 1.5 damage uh, of impact plus fibro bonus. This would mean that the weapon would deal 2d10s plus 10 plus 8. The ring can make no more than eight spears. Upon and upon detonation, all spears, uh, all spears are destroyed at, all at once. Activation of the detonation must be contested, and the explosion diameter is equal to a quarter of the spear's maximum shockwave range. This means that they have a radius of 11 meters, uh, meaning that the diameter of the explosions are 22 meters. Um... The only real downside to this is that this ability doesn't give any resistances, but I felt like that's not really something necessarily worth it, worth stating, other than just now, uh, which is, yeah, if you cover yourself around these uh, spears and make them explode, you will damage yourself with them. Uh, the weapon itself is incredibly powerful, and it does technically command the forces of wind, because impact damage is a physical damage type. Uh that's pretty much that. How close is it to law accuracy? Technically, you could create tornadoes and gusts of wind with this weapon, uh, but it's not necessarily an aerokinetic weapon. It can't control the air without using the air as a blast, but this would be more something that you would then build as a technique or an ability type under your trade, rather than it just, you know, activating from the spear and now you can just without any effort whatsoever, create a tornado. This would basically mean that the level of abilities that you can create with this weapon are based on the amount of, I guess, the level of creativity of whoever wields the weapon. Uh, the plausibility and the mechanics of it, I feel like this is actually really viable if people wanted to do this. I do think that the whole making eight spears and making them all explode thing would be ridiculously, insanely OP. But it doesn't necessarily bother me too much, considering that would have to mean that you would have to make a spear, put it down eight times for you to have that, or you would have to throw it. And obviously, even though that making a spear um, is a bonus action, you're not allowed to use any more. You're not allowed to have any more than two bonus actions per 
um, per turn anyway. And also, you can only throw twice per turn if it's not damaging someone, which means that per turn you could only throw two spears unless if you had a spear chucking combo ability where you could throw more. So it is more of a thing that you would build to set up. Plausibility, though, I do think that it's 100% plausible. Uh, mechanical aspect, it's relatively close to the way that in which that it kind of works in the game. Lore. Uh, huh. uh, other than the whole factor that it has the Erykinesis factor, I reckon this is relatively lore-friendly, considering Ion is actually a gold material. The powers are exactly it, cloning, because you literally keep cloning the spear. And the shockwave ability, it is explosive force, which again makes sense. Um, no, I mean, I, I'd say it's all pretty accurate, to be fair. Fair enough. I think that's the closest I mean, you can get to it. I have not gone that far yet in God of War Ragnarok. I will assume that is incredibly accurate. Um, and the only other thing, finally, is homebrew. I think one out of five, in all honesty. I don't really think that you need that much homebrew. Um, and I also don't think that you need that much uh, questioning from your DM. I'd say maybe two at highest. Yeah, I feel like yeah. it's a. I feel like it's a two to one. I, I have to agree there. Yeah. Only because the only thing that I think you'd actually have to get someone to argue with is potentially who's making it because neither of these abilities are actually abilities from the original blood transfusion effect yeah, yeah. which would mean that this particular thing that's why that's why i lean more towards the two because it's fair. like hey can i ask you do you, is this fine sort of thing so yeah, yeah. especially because you're just make especially because you're just having a ring that makes a spear as yeah. opposed to a spear that makes more spears yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, that's, that is true. Uh, especially, although, as I said, especially because you are technically... You have to make the spear first, then make the ring, oh. then have the ring do the thing with the spear so that then it can make more spears. Yeah, uh, I, get, I, get, I get that, but even then, that's... I can oh, understand yeah. why someone like, also like, I mean, you need a spear to make more spears, including... I can see why someone would... Maybe, I, that's why I think too. Because okay. I was like... Yeah. I can I can get behind that. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess the last one is Sam. Sam, what is the Which, weapon that you have chosen? I think I'm I'm sad to say mine is less less incredible as your toes are. Uh, because of uh, Persona Three Portable coming out, I think like a couple of weeks back, I decided to go for a weapon from it, which you can get for your companion you carry. It is called the. Called it's called the the bow of bow of affection, which is a relatively low level bow. I think it is like seventy seven damage, but uh, one of its best effects is it has a medium chance of charm, which essentially turns the enemy into a friend for a couple of rounds. So it will attack enemies and it will heal you in combat. Okay. That that's just what it does in the lore. Kind of like a Cupid's bow, so to speak. Essentially, yes. <laughs> okay. But uh, pretty much. But unlike a Cupid's bow, it can kill. I mean, I think they did confirm that Cupid's bow could kill in like some kind of lore. I can't remember what it was. And so, yeah, probably. <laughs> that's pretty, I'm afraid I know a lot about Greek mythology, but I can't remember Cupid as such. That's fair. Like, anyway, I'm pretty. Go on. Yeah. Anyway, uh, essentially, I made it in the game to be a, re a pretty much a simple bow, but with a, a change. So it's a 14 plus dexterity to use and a 14 plus willpower. Ooh. So pretty much, if you don't have the willpower, it ju it's just a simple bow because the effect needs a 14 willpower. That's so fair. you know you can shoot it at people, 80 meters, but it's and it's made of steel because. I think it looks like it's made of steel in the it game. It does, it does. I've got the picture up here. It does actually look I, like it's made I mean, of metal. <laughs> to be fair, I must also confess, that's not the actual image of her using it. That's a, the only image I could get of you carry wielding a bow that isn't saying, oh, you're tired now. Because that's one of the mechanics in the game. Okay. That's, that's the only picture of you carry I could get with an actual bow and arrow. So that's not the actual picture of the bow. No. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I mean, actually, you know what? It might be. It's been a while since I saw it. It is pink. I vaguely remember that much. And 
Going well, Sam. Yeah. It's going well. <laughs> <laughs> going well. Anyway, the way I did was is that whenever you hit someone with it, you roll a. You have to get a twenty plus on willpower, and if you do it, they come under the effect brainwashing from the telepathy power set, which is the ninth level power. And it's like the form it takes in this instance is they are infatuated with you. They'll still do whatever you ask them to do if they fail. But uh, like the flavor of the take is they become like infatuated, besotted with you essentially. Okay. Which, you know, that's it's essentially what brainwashing is, but brainwashing in this instance is it has a flavor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, that's about it. <laughs> okay. And yeah. Sorry. And other ideas, but they're very difficult to make. No, no, no. I, no, I quite like this one. I, I, I do. I am going to nitpick only because that, like, you didn't go down the whole list of things, so I'm now going to be that guy. Um, okay. So we'll we'll talk about the mechanics and the plausibility first. So the mechanics you obviously said about the 14 dexterity and willpower requirements. The materials you said it was steel, uh, and I'm just having look. Uh, telepathy stone and it just says brainwashing. So I'm assuming it doesn't really matter what it is as long as it has the ability of brainwashing. Um, oh yeah, and then you so, got... like I I imagined the way I imagined it was uh, because of the way you, you can use super power manipulation catalyst. Mm. You can implement weapons with specific abilities. Oh, have, absolutely, like, absolutely, yeah, yeah, you know, with specific specific things. So it's not the full power. It's just like, technically, oh. technically, the only limitation is it can't be the mutation under that power. Yes, that's the, that's the yeah. I I can't be technopathy. Weirdly no. enough, I actually still could see a way in how it would work technopathy. Like, I mean, you could, unless, yeah. It's just more ra- roundabout way. And yeah, unless you're, unless you're playing robot. Well, I was actually going to say, unless if it's literally just like a um, the way that it works is that the actual like it doesn't have a bowstring and it's technopathy with brainwashing and the actual piece of technology is the bow and the bow just shoots these um, holographic arrows at people and when it hits them, it then affects their mind in that way using the brainwashing effect. Mm. I don't know. That's how I thought sort of thought of it in the technopathy I mean, sense. I- if I was going to, do, I'd probably do with like energy emission because because you're making That's... things because like, tech because I don't think technopathy no because it's only this it's the second one where you actually make things with your mind, isn't it? It's the other power that you like project things with your mind. Uh, I have to be honest, I can't remember. But I was gonna anyway. Ask, I was going to ask something about this dacron bowstring. What's a dacron bowstring? Oh, I looked up. I looked up the best bowstrings. And apparently, dacron is a material. It's a type of uh, like it's a not polyester, but it's a type of uh, like man-made. It's like a man-made. Oh, like a synthetic, like fiber. Yeah, synthetic. Oh, yeah. okay, that's cool. Synthetic. The more you know. Durability yeah. eighty, range fifty. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Damage two uh, d eight plus two piercing. Uh, again, yeah, a, a fairly still... a fairly modest bow, like a fairly modest yeah. bow. I think is actually as I said, as decent. I said, relatively low level. Yeah, the uh, but its effect is useful even even like in later games because it's still like a medium effect. So where it says if the user gets a twenty, I'm assuming that's if they wield the bow with dexterity or willpower. Oh no. Oh, uh, no, no, no. With, an arrow oh. makes on roll up bar. Okay, yeah. Uh, and then if they get 20, then they can activate brainwashing. So my question then is that, like, obviously, that means that they, you then look at the perk brainwashing and basically someone has to beat your roll uh, upon what yeah. you've got. Otherwise, they will be brainwashed with infatuation. Um, I have to be honest. I'm not I'm not even going to lie here. I actually really like this, this weapon. Uh, I really like the way in which this is done. Uh, yeah, because it's... It's it's not too damaging. It's not too game breaking. It's just it, the weapon you can see, see someone who's it, like, "Oh, I'm Cupid Man." It, yeah, it is. It is quite fascinating. I think the only issue that it, this weapon could have is the exact same issue that we had with Kane's, except from on a much smaller scale, which is the uh, brainwashing. Because brainwashing doesn't have, actually have a time limit. Uh, yeah, that's the thing is, is that in the game, the mechanics are already there. Yeah, I think I think I think I did look at them. I think if you're told to do something you wouldn't like to do, or like every day, you're allowed to like roll again. You're allowed to roll willpower again. Yeah. So there is there is like a potential time limit, depending on how good you. I mean, it'd be infinite for me, obviously, because my rules are terrible. But <laughs> uh, 
And it, like, it does have a potential time limit. To be fair, brainwashing has multiple issues with it anyway, because uh, if someone breaks you out of it, they can break you out of it through a couple of different ways. Uh, so again, that's not the wor- again, it's not the worst ability in the world. And to be honest, I kind of like it, considering, as you said, if, if a person's roles are bad enough, they could potentially be stuck in it permanently anyway. Um, and again, I guess it's just one of those situations of, you know, sounds more like a skill issue than it does actually sound like a genuine problem with the weapon. Okay. So yeah. I'm just going to, I'm not going to really meander on that one. I'm not going to, I'm not going to shit on your dream, Sam, because to be honest, it's actually a really cool weapon. Mechanics. Yeah. I think based on what you've said, it sounds relatively accurate, to be honest. I don't know about you, Kane. No, I mean, yeah, based on the description you give, it um, sounds pretty consistent. Law-friendly. Yeah. It sounds law-friendly. I don't know much about the game, but it sounds law-friendly. Like Literally, it sounds like you sat down and were like, how do I make this as accurate as possible? And you did it. It it genuinely doesn't sound yeah. like as if there's any law issues whatsoever. Yeah, it's not... Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty basic weapon. It's pretty pretty easy but that's why i like it and here's here's the issue because now i i kind of i've kind of struggled with this so i'm going to ask you sam how much how much amount of dm allowance do you think would be required for this i think really because because it's on it's already par in the game i would think probably one maybe 1.5 the main difficulty the main like dm thing i would be against was like how did you you get this like how do you make this one because you'd need both a telepath and someone with superpower manipulation to make it that'd be the only thing i would have against it now here's Aren't I, like here's the thing with that yeah. i i have to agree but the only reason i have to agree and also disagree at some point is because literally that's the same for mine except from you need two freaking powers and two objects to be able to get what i got whereas you just need a bow a telepath with one perk and then and and arguably you don't even need someone with superpower manipulation because you could just say that's the effect of this arrow or something you know like you know and the the difference being is that like your one is just a ring if you're holding a ring and a spear and you made more spears yes but your one is you have a ring on your finger and from it spears sprout out which is why i'm kind of iffy about that because if you had to carry a spear with you at all times and it makes more spears in your hands i'd be cool i think well that makes sense but you know what I mean? I will say, going back to the plausibility for a second, I will say the only thing that I think would be a DM headache nightmare is your is your effect. But because of the role requirement, I have to be honest, it is one of those things that it's a random chance. And again, going back to what, what we were saying, funnily enough, as the downside uh, for Kane's weapon, but as the upside for yours, is actually the role requirement of willpower, saying that, like, oh, a 20. Do you have to get a 20... Just to get the the worst version of the ailment for for Canes. Whereas, like, if you get a twenty, that is the only effect that this bow has. Otherwise, it's just a bow, and that means that every time that you land an arrow, you have to roll willpower. And if you don't have a uh, positive willpower past two, you are just hoping for the best. Um, yeah. So, I, so I'd say that it's a what, what is it like a. Th- like a, a one in twenty or a two in twenty chance of actually getting your effect off, which is actually a really slim possibility. I I will say on the bright I, side, it it that kind of makes it more interesting. Maybe I should have put the willpower higher up because there is a medium effect chance, so it should, should maybe be like plus four. I I still like it the way that it is, in all honesty. Because well, I, I mean, a regular regular brainwashing is a twenty. Uh, yeah. So no, I don't. I don't, that's I don't mean that, but I mean like the uh, like the willpower attribute required to wield it. I mean, should maybe be higher well, up. So plus, it's... that's I think that's a plus three. Or I think was it? Not, I think it's either a plus three or a plus four. So technically, like you having that is actually. Fine. I think I believe it's plus three. So, yeah, yeah. So I think I think I mean, that's fine. Seventeen. Mm, close enough, I guess. That's not that's thing. If you had to, if you had like twenty willpower, which I think is plus eight, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'd be you'd you'd be great because that's like it's just your instant brainwashing bow because you only have to get twelve. Yeah, although you also have to hope that a person doesn't get affected. And going back to the cane uh, argument is if denial can work against that, it can definitely oh, yeah. work against this. Like 
That's the one thing. I will say there is one thing about my armament that is a little different than the two of yours, which is 100% of the time it is still working as the original viable weapon that it's supposed to be, both in the physical plane as well as in combat it, combat against anything. Um, whereas, like, oh, yeah, brainwashing... Because it's damaged. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've literally it's gone a... for, like, the artillery damage thing. This yeah, does damage. Its, it's <laughs> ability is just to make more of itself, pretty much. <laughs> ugh, ugh, I do damage. That's literally yeah. what I've built. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I... Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I I'm gonna have to agree, Sam. I kind of think because that it's an ability in the game, uh, it, it is either a one or a two, and the only reason is just because of having a brainwashing ability. It's not even the plausibility because I think, in all honesty, the plausibility is the thing that makes it a one. Because again, unlike mine, you only need one power to actually make that weapon, um, whereas with mine, you need two. Um, yeah. So yeah, I I actually I actually have to say yeah that 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 does actually work quite nicely. Actually, as well, it's it's like let's be fair, the maximum you can get willpower is eight. You still have to roll a twelve, so it's much much more difficult. Whereas like say you had say you have the like the brainwashing the power, and you got like a fifteen SPMA. Yeah, or even ten. Yeah, that's, even ten. Like you only need to roll a ten. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Whereas like with and that willpower. Bow, you have to get a 12 just to make it work. So it's still like or, quite a decent difficulty. Yeah. Even at high, even at the highest level. Yeah. So I guess we should probably wrap this up by coming to a, a, an agreement of some sort. Um, go with what, like, what's the best, what's the most lower accurate in which we would actually use in the game? Well, in all honesty, I feel like the one that is the most lore accurate in all honesty, is probably yours, because that it's just a bow that does affection. Um, mm -hmm. The one that, in all honesty, is the most interesting, I'd have to say, is still probably Kane's, but it's the least usable. It, because it, we all agreed, BBEG final boss kind of weapon, or even just like a, hey, look what I can do, and then immediately get shot down by the... like average dms because let's be honest unless if you are the most like everyone gets away with everything level dm i don't think that that weapon is getting allowed um so mm, no. i think i think as you said kane you have you had shot yourself in the foot with this one i you, didn't come you, here to win i just came here to make the most broken thing you know which what? i will continue you definitely keep that as your um as your title here is the one who made the most broken thing so i guess it's now just a fight between me and sam sam or buddy boy plead yeah. your case <laughs> well for my one I think, Blair, I think my one you'd probably use it probably in a lower level setting, or like in a setting where like like you're like tens, like like level ten odds, with with a sort of good couple of trade levels. Because higher up, it does bugger all damage, and when you're when you're that high up, if you're in one of your games, you're fighting people with denial or willpower up the wazoo, so it doesn't become as useful a weapon. But when you're low level. Or, like, or at least, like, of a lower level, it would probably be, like, the bane of your existence until you begin doing, like, making the willpower people show up. Now, personally, I actually have to be honest with this one on, on this. I personally do think that I would allow all three of these weapons. But if, if someone was to come to me and just say I had to pick one, it's a really tough one between your one and my one. And the only reason is because damage, ugh, is actually quite interesting, but also I think the level of strategy that anyone could play around with, with the idea of making multiple spears and just watching the whole world just blow to bits, is it is fascinating. But also because I think that it is a DM's nightmare if someone has the ability to basically shoot someone with an arrow, brainwash them, and then, yep, we now have a servant slave for the rest of the campaign because no one's ever going to touch them or hurt them no. and nobody's ever going to snap them out of it because we're going to make sure of it. And I know that this was happen thing. because that's the that's stuff the that you've already done. The last thing is, though, is that if, I, if you're a DM, like if, if, you, if you really want to screw them over, someone with this weapon, is you make them utterly besotted. Like, 
Have you ever have you ever seen the film uh, Wish Upon? No. It's one of those like classic Wishmaster movies where you make a wish and it turns out horribly. She wishes for a boy to love her, to love her, and then like he becomes like a stalker <laughs> who like takes pictures of her and like follows her everywhere and like is like the creepy like that kind of thing. That's what you do with this brainwashing if you wanted to screw them over. I also if you want them to snap out of it, is that they become like that besotted, like that. But I also think there is one thing that Kane and I don't have that you do, which is, although I have durability of the ring, and although I do have durability of the spears, the spears are expected to explode, and it's not often that a person's wearables, especially jewellery, gets damaged to the point of absolute destruction. Um, as a matter of fact, I even made a comment about the fact that when uh, we had it in the, in the tawny, when you had it that yours broke, I said this is the first time that I think jewellery has actually been damaged, uh, specifically being targeted, and then only for Connor to say, well, actually, I bought a load of jewellery specifically for um, uh, to give Fletcher, uh, to give Felix and Rakia, because of, like Felix you know, being such a good friend and obviously Rakia being so close, and they get both melted during the uh, getting completely electrocuted to the point of which he was just nothing but ash. <laughs> And um, good times, yeah, good times. And and uh, I, it made me realize those are the only times we've ever actually had it where uh, where I have attacked someone or done something to someone where I have specifically targeted the jewelry. So if say for instance you wanted to get rid of these weapons, it is a lot easier to have it that you break someone's main weapon like a bow than it is to break a ring. Um, unless if you're being really way too specific, and then it becomes painfully obvious that they're trying to take that out. Whereas, like, with a weapon that you are holding, it becomes a bit less obvious that that's what you've wanted all along. Um, so I, I'd say, personally, like, the, the concept of the bow behind the concept of the spear, I'm going to have to say that I'd probably vote for yours on this one, but I don't know. What do you think, uh, Kane? I mean... I don't know really. Um, you know, what, just to just to wrap things up, I think I'll go bow. Okay. Any reasons other than speeding it along? Uh, it's more interesting than Brum Brum Spear, in my opinion. So. <laughs> Fair, fair, fair. Well, that's how you have it, Sam. Your spear. Yeah, I mean, no. your bow. <laughs> yes, my bow. My Excellent. bow and your spear, sir. No. You, yes, your Sorry. bow I mean, from the... My, my ne- <laughs> that's my next time, is my, my, my spear of affection, which I throw through people and it cuts them in half. <laughs> and then they, then they turn to me with hearts in their eyes. <laughs> Well, there you have it, Sam. You have done it. You have won the very first weapons workshop from the Animite Tales podcast. How are you feeling? You know what? I feel like next time I will make a more complicated one. (laughs) And that's fair enough. Thank you very much for everyone for listening. This has been the Animite Tales podcast's weapon workshop, where we have just now tried to figure out how exactly we can make these weapons from fiction, video games, and other sorts of pop culture into the system known as Animite Tales, a tabletop RPG. If you want to learn more, you can check out the website known as AnimiteTales.com. Thank you very much for listening, and as always, have a wonderful night. See you in the future. Why do you always make it so delayed? Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Ciao, ciao, for now!